In the golden age of kickboxing, there was a sudden death elimination tournament, where 16 masters from all different backgrounds and styles came together to test themselves for honor and for glory. This was the legendary K1 Grand Prix, where the best talent all fought multiple times in one night to determine who was truly the greatest in the world. We began in the epic 1997 Grand Prix, where 11 of the 15 fights ended by KO. And this fight was no exception. Ernesto Hoost was an experienced Dutch kickboxer who already had several impressive wins under his belt. He was known for his devastating leg kicks, but his kick defense was devastating on its own. Stefan Lico was a talented up-and-coming German kickboxer who was quickly gaining a reputation as an aggressive fighter who lived up to his nickname, the Blitz. What's more, he had the defensive skills to pull off his reckless exchanges. But it was anyone's guess if he would be so aggressive against the formidable, much more experienced Hoost. Only one man would proceed past the prelims to the next phase of the tournament. It was now time for one of the most important moments for each competitor, the feel-out period, where more times than not, the rest of the fight is determined. Hoost began by jabbing to establish distance, and circled inside with the kickboxer's pivot, keeping his foot straight forward as he crossed his rear leg behind to avoid exposing the back of his leg. Liko began by testing Hoost's reflexes. He feinted jabs of his own, then threw a rear leg roundhouse instead, but Hoost responded with well honed skill and precision. Luckily for Liko, he didn't get injured by Hoost's check as many of his prior and future competitors would. Hoos jabbed again, then tested Liko's reaction to his own leg kick. But Liko did not turn his shin towards the kick as Hoos did. This meant that Hoos was free to kick all he liked with little threat of pain or injury. His long range weapons tested, Hoos tried out his power punches. Liko simply retreated. If this proved consistent, then Hoos wouldn't need to worry too much about counters. But Liko did not prove so timid the next time, parrying Hoost's next jab and returning across even after taking a hard double jab. It was now clear that Liko would be no pushover. Newcomer or not, he was there to fight. Liko now finally tried out his own jab. Hoost parried and turned that into a frame, establishing distance as he slammed his leg into Liko's. What's more, Liko tried to pivot out of his jab like a boxer exposing his leg against Ernesto Hoost in the worst way possible. Only 30 seconds in, and Hoost had most of the information he needed. It was time to up the pressure. He tried two jab-body-cross combinations. This is especially dangerous in kickboxing as it leaves the fighter's head open for hooks and kicks. And unlike MMA, the level change doesn't threaten a potential takedown for the opponent to worry about. But Liko simply backed away then intercepted one of Hoost's leg kicks with a well-timed spinning back kick. This was a very intelligent counter, as roundhouse kicks expose the fighter's stomach by squaring them up. Liko next partially landed a leg kick, catching Hoost off guard by throwing just as he was completing a step forward. Liko may have lacked experience at K1, but it was clear that he had incredible timing. But Hoost could not let these two successful attacks in a row slide, so he got aggressive. Hoost fainted across, Liko shelled up, and Hoost followed up with the double lead hook combination. Liko defended by moving inside and smothering Hoost's last hook. But Hoost used this to his advantage, pushing Liko sideways with his forearm to move him directly into one of his devastating roundhouse kicks. Moments later, Hoost was on the offensive again. But Liko slipped his tight hook and dropped under his cross. Oddly enough, Liko did fantastic at defending advanced techniques, but was lackluster at defending the basics. Hoos continuously slammed his shin into Liko's leg, who kept leaving it open and exposed. But while Hoos could catch Liko with his long range attacks, he was still having no success with power shots. Hoos seemed frustrated and Liko managed to land a tremendous leg kick in response to Hoost's reckless lead hook. 
He then stayed right where he was to calmly block one of Hu's head kicks. What's more, he even turned his cover block into a high block, putting Hoost in an unbalanced and highly compromised position. However, Hoost managed to hop back and throw a cross in a kind of reverse Superman punch. But this must have grown Liko's confidence as he went on the offensive. However, this turned out to be a huge mistake. Liko shuffled deep into a hard jab, which Hoost cross elbow blocked. Liko followed up with a hard rear hook, but Hoost ducked in to smother it. Meanwhile, Liko's momentum sent him crashing into Hoost, tripping over Hoost's lead leg. Hoost pivoted away outside, but to his credit, Liko managed to follow him, jump turning like Tyson while keeping track of distance with the rear arm frame. Liko was relentless and charged forward with the wide hook, but Hoost kept distance with his own frame while gliding back. Then pounded a short, hard ride into Liko's skull. Liko dropped like a sack of potatoes, but then showed great resolve. He got up immediately, displaying no hint of intimidation, even as Hoost upped the pressure. But Hoost would not allow Liko to shrug the knockdown off, slipping inside of Liko's cross. He then worked into a clinch, Transitioning from a collar tie into a forearm frame mid-strike and driving Liko off balance to land a hard leg kick. But Liko had no quit and tried a spinning back fist, which Hoost deftly sidestepped before trying some flashy moves of his own. The round came to a close and there was no question who had won it. But this was K1. Fighters had routinely come back from worse rounds to KO their opponents. This was the excitement of Grand Prix tournaments, where anything could happen, and the prospects of your favorite fighter could end in a split second at any time. As it turned out, the next round would in fact end quickly and decisively. The two began with a dual exchange of leg kicks, then both hit air during a simultaneous exchange. Throwing a combined six punches. It was as if both men had leveled up defense to max, but had forgotten to put anything at all into offense. But Hoos quickly rallied with a leg kick, then just missed a rear straight counter to Liko's rear leg roundhouse. Remember this counter, it's a classic and will be important in just a moment. Now Liko tried a hook, but took another leg kick for his trouble. However, Liko muscled through it and landed a leg kick of his own. Liko had been doing better than most would have expected. But then, his lack of experience showed once more. He again got aggressive after a minor success, staying in range to switch step into a lead leg roundhouse. Hoos now used the same cross counter that had nearly worked for Liko's rear leg roundhouse, sending his mouth guard on an early return flight home and ending Liko's run in the tournament. Liko had put up a valiant effort against one of the most experienced, talented kickboxers in the world. He would later go on to do great things and carve out his own name. But for now, Hoost would progress to the semifinals. Stay tuned to follow along as we cover the other noteworthy fights from the 97 K1 Grand Prix. I'd like to give a huge thanks to Glory Kickboxing for providing me with this content. If you'd like to watch the best kickboxing in the world, then watch Glory 78 on September 4th, where the legendary Badr Hari will fight in the main event, along with three other title fights on the line. You can purchase the pay-per-view in the link in the description. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.